Hi everyone, welcome back to another interview series. My name is Meher from Newfoundland and Labrador. And today I have the privilege to interview Sarah Dodin from Toronto. Hi Sarah, how are you doing? Hello Meher, I'm good, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you for being here. So Sarah has over 17 years of experience in career coaching, DI, HR, and talent acquisition. She is also an elite certified recruiter expert, a certified career strategist, and a certified resume strategist from Career Professionals of Canada. She has been awarded the top recruiter in 2022 and has been ranked as number one Canada's and number one Toronto's corporate talk top recruiter. Congratulations. Sarah is passionate about career coaching, mentoring, resume writing, and personal branding. She supports professionals at different ages, stages of their careers, including newcomers to Canada, helping them navigate the job market and achieve their career goals. So Sarah, let's start from there. A lot of times when we are helping newcomers or immigrants, they just tell us, I need a job. But we yeah. tell them, okay, let's go one step back. What mm -hmm. do you really want? What is your career clarity? So in your opinion, why that is important to do first before applying to any job. Yes, and thank you for having me today, Meher. Um, so you bring uh, a very important point uh, when someone wants to start uh, their job search, which is their career clarity and where they wanna go and the direction they wanna go to. If a person or a professional, or let's say a job seeker has a clarity about their direction, mm -hmm. it will really, uh, um, facilitate the job search journey to them in an easier way and more strategic approach. And as well as it will uh, uh, have them reach their goal faster. Mm -hmm. So um, a career clarity, uh, uh, basically we, uh, we as career coaches, when we yes. work with job seekers, we actually do that in the beginning of the process yes. to make sure that the job seeker understands uh, which uh, uh, sector they are targeting, which field they are looking for, and then what jobs they are looking for. So if they have an understanding and a good understanding and clarity about these things, then the next steps are so much easy to mm -hmm. do. And then they will have more of a dark targeted approach to, uh, um, to speak uh, with key people and network with them, mm -hmm. as well as to seek these opportunities. The way that we do career clarity is through different uh, exercises and yes. approaches. We actually uh, explore what are their key values. So once they have their key values known and clear, it will be as well easier for them to understand what culture can suit them better to work in. Like, I mean, company's culture. Mm. Uh, we work on self-awareness. So when they understand themselves more and their skills, they will know as well what kind of uh, uh, jobs suits them better. Mm -hmm based on their strengths and areas of development and their expertise. Uh, we work as well on like exploring, uh, you know, based on their accumulated experiences, we might even explore different fields that yeah. they can either maybe transition to or even evolve more into. So that step of career clarity is quite critical, especially if we're speaking in the context of immigrants yes. uh, and they're coming to a new market. Yeah. They can, this time of their lives, it can be actually, uh, um, I would say, a milestone or mm -hmm. even a transitional uh, phase to have them could be explore other opportunities yes. or other fields that they have uh, 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 hidden, uh, let's say, skills for. Uh, and we call this like exploring their transferable skills to actually have them explore a new uh, field or a new career. Yeah, I totally agree. It's very important to have. But a lot of times, me included, when I came to Canada 12 years ago, a lot yeah. of times uh, the situation was, oh, you don't have Canadian experience. Or yes. let me do survival job. Why? I have it, my clarity. But let me do yeah. survival job to get that transitional experience or to know the Canadian market. And then I can go. But sometimes some people are feeling either stuck there or their experience in wherever their country coming are not being appreciated as much. Some people are there were managers or something, and they are saying to me that if I'm applying for a survival job, 
McDonald's or whatever, I'm yeah. a manager. Then even with the survivor, they're not giving me that because they know that I'm not going to stay there. So how mm. do they that have? What's that in your opinion? Yeah, no, no, you, you actually uh, uh, share a very realistic uh, overview of the yeah. situation of what happens with immigrants uh, when they land uh, into a new market, regardless of the market. But since we're talking about the Canadian context here, uh, there are two things to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, um, managing a person's expectations of what they are getting into and having that reality check and doing proper research about the market they are uh, getting into in terms of uh, what the opportunities are like, uh, what, uh, uh, like, uh, let's say, potentially suitable roles they can tap into. Maybe there is a different terminologies of the roles in different markets. So I need to as well equip myself and update myself of that market. Um, the other thing is that... Um, I would say always uh, to put the ego aside when yeah. you are exploring a new market. Uh, uh, it's not definitely an underestimation of someone's talent or someone's expertise. It's just to help you in navigating the market in a better spirit and a better mental state mm -hmm. because it, you will notice, and you and I are both immigrants, is that we would immigrate at a certain age where we have been maybe in a very good role yeah. in our uh, back in the country of where we came from. Yes. And then, uh, you know, usually as human beings, we want to continue that involvement and that mm -hmm. career development in the new market. So when I mentioned managing expectations and managing the ego as well of someone, uh, of, of one's uh, uh, self, I mean, it, it will help in uh, uh, going through that change and that mm -hmm. transition and accepting it. So one aspect or one approach that people do is taking survival jobs. Yes. Uh, that is definitely a tactic that is well understood and well accepted because um, to be we realistic, need to pay the bills. exactly, we need the income, we need to pay the bills and that's all okay. Uh, now, meanwhile, if, mm -hmm. if that person was, uh, 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 let's say, was getting into survival jobs, which is the first strategy, that is totally okay. It's a bridging job. Yes. You would take it as an opportunity to integrate yeah. within the culture, within the market, build your network, get to know more people. And again, keep your spirits up. Take yeah. it as every day is an opportunity to actually explore more about the market, but also expand my network. You never know at that day who you will meet. That can mm -hmm. be your connection to your next step. And then uh, I would actually try to acquire as much skills as I can from that new, exp new, new, let's say, opportunity or exposure. Even if I was in a higher ranks back in the yeah. time, still, we learn something new every day. And this is how we keep our spirits up every day. Now, uh, once you get the opportunity that you want, uh, the one question I get faced with, or actually uh, uh, every almost immigrant client ask me, yeah. is that how do I present that on my resume? I don't want to mm -hmm. downgrade myself as a profile on the resume. So you can either keep it out uh, and not mention that you've been working, let's say, in a restaurant or in a mm -hmm. grocery store or, or uh, uh, until you find the opportunity. But when you actually interview, you need to as well let them know that you recently got that job because you would need to provide two weeks notice. So you actually uh, make sure you are transparent. Mm -hmm. Or if you want to mention that opportunity on the resume, we need then to put some context into it to show how these transferable skills are going to be helpful to you in the next opportunity. Yeah. And that will show that you have as well integrated into the culture and so on and so forth. Yeah. Um, so yeah. those are the two different yeah. approaches. Now, if I speak, um, Meher, about the Canadian experience. Yes. So... It's it's actually, if I put it in, in, in context, it's about uh, the employers want to know and want to make sure that this person that we're getting on board understand, let's say, the culture, understand the working context and the market. Mm -hmm. They have understanding of the laws and regulations. So they are not a total stranger. So mm -hmm. this is how I even can equip myself with some knowledge about this. So I'm not a total, let's say, a uh, new person to this context, um, because also to 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 position yourself uh, uh, or. 
to put yourself in a successful position or to succeed mm -hmm. in that new position, you need as well to do that homework by yourself, which is making sure that you uh, equip yourself with the knowledge. Yeah. Now, the way the the, the, the new, let's say, uh, people to the Canadian market or immigrants can promote themselves in an interview when it comes to the Canadian experience yes. uh, or lacking, sorry, I mean the Canadian experience yeah. is to always focus on their strengths during mm -hmm. the interview. And what does that mean? Is that when they answer the questions in the interview, um, they wouldn't uh, actually uh, mention a reference to the previous market they were at, or they would mention examples very specific to regulations of the previous market or country they were at. They would still focus on the technical side of the job, show yeah. how strong they are technically, how much they understand the field mm -hmm. and the role without a context. So this is how they can make themselves neutral. Yeah. Those are great tips, Sarah. Thank you very much. So for the audience watching or listening for the first time, I'm going to ask Sarah a couple of questions and I'm going to post them on a daily basis. Kind of a journey with us. You can like, share or comment. So tune in next time for another great question with Sarah.